We're looking at the Republican field. We see the loudmouth Trump uh, triumphing. He's ahead nationally. He's ahead in New Hampshire. He's within two points or so of uh, the Koch candidate Walker in the uh, Iowa caucuses. We're told that Trump is indeed building the kind of uh, ground organization without which you cannot do anything in Iowa, right? You have to have a ground organization. Uh, he seems to be acquiring it. But the, the interesting one is Little Rand Paul. I think if we write the history of U.S. ideology in the near future, we may say it was in the summer of 2015 that the libertarian movement began to die, to go deservedly into that oblivion and that bad night. Little Rand is cratering. He's cratering because he started his campaign on an aircraft carrier. He's cratering because he flip-flopped on many issues. His opportunism, his scoundrel character, too much in, in evidence. Uh, and in particular, his campaign against the Iran nuclear accord has shocked his dupes and former followers. We're getting reports of a little Rand's people burning their T-shirts. Can you believe it? They're burning their I Stand with Rand T-shirts. $35 T-shirts are being burned by disillusioned Paul Tards, and sometimes they get together and have a burning bee. <laughs> They've got a burning bee going on, and uh, that is reported in the uh, various uh, the various uh, media. And all kinds of people are turning against him. I would point in particular to uh, Justin Raimondo of anti-war, right? This is sort of the... Uh, the high priest of uh, libertarian anti-war uh, ideology, in his column is entitled, Rand Paul, Fraud, Failure, and Liar. How about that? As the smoke wafted, wafted up into the already smoggy Los Angeles air, a group of young libertarians watched as Jehel Aram burned his Stand with Rand t-shirts. He had two of them. And he had been hobnobbing and phone banking with little Rand. But now it's over. And we've got articles on Mondo Weiss. <laughs> what prompted such a fiery stunt? The son of Ron, the son of the leprechaun, opposes the deal with Iran over its nuclear program, faulting the agreement for lifting sanctions. We'll have more of this in just a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to uh, World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., the last day of July uh, 2015. Is the libertarian movement, uh, it is an artificial movement, and we'll talk about this for a second, is it dying? Uh is this the beginning of the collapse of the Republican Party in general? Right? We know that we have a we have some kind of a feud going on. Cruz is attacking Mitch McConnell, rightly pointing out that he's a liar. Of course he's a liar. He's a tool of Koch. Speaking of Koch, Trump is not getting any money from Koch. What does this mean? Right? All that money the Koch brothers poured into the Republican Party. And now a tin horn demagogue comes along and uh, essentially uh, that money may be lost. Now, remember, we can look at uh, Trump from any number of points of view. We've already got uh, the tax Wall Street Party to thank for a, uh, a vignette showing the head of Trump as a wrecking ball. And sure enough. Uh, Miley Cyrus sitting on top of the wrecking ball. Uh, this wrecking ball is knocking down the edifice of the uh, reactionary Republican Party. The other one that comes to mind is Samson and Delilah. Remember, Samson uh, was very good against the Philistines as long as he had his uh, hair and his strength. 
but he uh, betrayed his secret to Delilah, who cut his hair off. He was blinded, and he was brought into the Philistine temple. But as his hair began to grow back, he had enough strength to pull down the columns. The roof of the Philistine temple came down, and the entire Philistine ruling class and Samson were crushed in the process. Do we see something here that is comparable to the present and the coming uh, situations? Well, I think we may, in the sense that Trump may well be able to pull down this rotten edifice of the Philistine reactionary Republican Party, but also uh, himself uh, be uh, brought down under the wreckage, under the rubble, of the Philistine temple. In this case, we're using the term Philistine just culturally, right? That the Republicans are barbarians and uh, boors and they have no taste and they're Philistines, right? They're babbits, right? This kind of thing, right? The bourgeoisie, as H.L. Mencken uh, called them. So all of this is happening. Remember where libertarianism comes from. It is a foreign body in American history. Don't tell me that Alexander Hamilton was a follower of the Austrian school of political economy. Not George Washington, not Alexander Hamilton, and not any of them, not one of them. Because the Austrian school more or less came into existence after the American Civil War. The United States, using protectionist policies, at least two out of the three that you'd have to have, uh, in particular, a protective tariff and massive construction of internal improvements at public expense, even if they're only in one state, that is to say the transcontinental railroad, the U.S. embarked on a huge boom. And as long as you had greenbacks, the third element, a government-controlled currency, the United States took off on its way, on our way, to world industrial supremacy. So that's the American system of Henry Clay. A national bank, the currency, the internal improvements, infrastructure, we would say today, and the protective tariff. These are things we need. We want that protective tariff back. We want to seize the Federal Reserve and make that into the National Bank of the United States. Uh, but Little Rand, of course, representing the Austrian school. Where does that come from? Well, the United States was doing so well under this protectionist system that uh, Prince Bismarck, Otto von Bismarck of Germany, Prussia, uh, said, look, uh, we're getting nowhere with free trade. The British are looting us. We're going to go to protectionism, too. Uh, and this caused quite a shock because that at that point, Germany began to pull ahead of Austria-Hungary. And the Habsburgs in Vienna... The Kook Empire, as it's been called, uh, the, the Habsburgs in their decadent uh, paradise of Vienna said, look, we have to have uh, a, a school of economics, we'll call it the Austrian school, to oppose the German or historical school. So the difference is the Austrian school is the psychological school, starts in this period, the 1870s, 1880s, and the alternative is the German school, but, of course, the German school and the American school are practically identical. The cross uh, linkages are very strong. Above all, Friedrich List, uh, who was uh, one of the great em experts in this in the German-speaking area, and, of course, the fact that Bismarck was consciously imitating the success of the U.S. under protectionism. So uh, the Austrian school crippled the Habsburg Empire. A lot of tragedies come out of this. But then uh, when this was, um, you know, not successful, it was kept alive by the London School of Economics. So the psychological school, the Austrian school, kept alive by the London School of Economics so that somebody like um, David Rockefeller could come there in the 1930s. And, of course, since he was uh, practically uh, illiterate, he had to have somebody to do his papers. And that was that was von Hayek. And he later brought von Hayek over to the United States, and he brought von Mises over to the United States. And a lot of this got into the Mount Pelerin Society, the most sinister 
uh, academic or theoretical organization. It's up there with Bilderberg and Trilateral, Skull and Bones, whatever you want. The, the, the Mount Pelerin Society meeting in Switzerland in, I believe, 1947 or thereabouts, uh, set up an international network determined to fight back against the overwhelming success of the New Deal. But, of course, that success was not palatable to oligarchs, right, to uh, essentially uh, anti-human uh, people concerned about aristocratic privilege and all the rest. They didn't want that. They hated the New Deal. So they began to roll that back, and it, it went essentially through academia, through endowed professorships, people like the Koch brothers creating or helping to create the Cato Institute in Washington, D.C. So you can see whether it's David Rockefeller bringing von Hayek and von Mises into the United States, right? Von Hayek, who went on then to be the one of the main inspirations of Thatcher in Britain, Thatcher Milk Snatcher, who destroyed the coal mining industry, and so many others in Britain. Uh, and then von Mises, right, the great uh, Puba and Eminence Gris of the school. Is this coming to an end? In other words, all of these libertarians flocked into the Paul Tard faction, the Ron Paul, Rand Paul faction. Is that collapsing because of too many betrayals, right? Even the dumbest dupe will, in the end, begin to figure out that he's being robbed blind. And I think that's what you can detect. I seem to see that the Daily Paul website is gone. No more Daily Paul. This is now something else, but it's not the Daily Paul. Uh, as I say, it looks like the people at Russia today, RT, they have been tragically smitten by the Paul Tard faction. We can see why, right? They... They think that that will cause problems here in the United States. Put it that way. Who can blame them? I don't, I don't, uh, really blame this all on them. It would be smarter for them not to do this. And indeed, maybe they're quitting. Maybe they're stopping to do that, right? Maybe they're, they seem to be looking at Bernie Sanders or Trump or anybody, but little Rand is now retreating into the shadows. Is this the twilight of the libertarian fraud? This artificial movement brought over here. We sure think so. And all of you libertarians out there who are looking for something authentic, come to us. Come to the Tax Wall Street Party. Subscribe to our briefing at taxwallstreetparty at gmail.com. Taxwallstreetparty at gmail.com. And we'll be glad to give you a free subscription to our matchless daily briefing. Start with the triple series on Allen and Isis. We'll be back next week on World Crisis Week to go deservedly into that oblivion and that bad night. Little Rand is cratering. He's cratering because he started his campaign on an aircraft carrier. He's cratering because he flip-flopped on many issues. His opportunism, his scoundrel character, too much in, in evidence in Iowa, right? You have to have a ground organization. Uh, he seems to be acquiring it. But the, the interesting one is Little Rand Paul. I think if we write the history of U.S. ideology in the near future, we may say it was in the summer of 2015 that the libertarian movement began to die. Uh, and in particular... His campaign against the Iran nuclear accord has shocked his dupes and former followers. We're getting reports of a little Rand's people burning their T-shirts. Can you believe it? They're burning their I stand with Rand T-shirts. $35 T-shirts are being burned by disillusioned Paul Tards, and sometimes they get together and have a burning bee. <laughs> they, they've got a burning bee going on, and uh, that is reported in the uh, various. Uh, we're looking at the Republican field. We see the loudmouth Trump uh, triumphing. He's ahead nationally, he's ahead in New Hampshire, he's within. Two points or so of uh, the Koch candidate Walker in 
the uh, Iowa caucuses. We're told that Trump is indeed building the kind of uh, ground organization without which you cannot do anything uh, 